Uh, hi everyone, this is Nadia from China Ancient, your host for today, and welcome to the info session of Beijing Normal University, Hong Kong Baptist University, United International College. So we are happy to see you, uh, to see everybody here uh, joining this info session. This could be your morning time or maybe afternoon time or even evening time on your side, but regardless, you still manage and uh, Manage to join this info session and hopefully this info session will be a fruitful session for everybody. Right, so uh, in this info session, the teacher from UIC will be sharing the admissions information for 2022 intake. And also there will be a live Q&A at the end as well. So if you have any questions uh, about the programs, about the requirements, about admissions uh, information or any questions at all related to admissions uh, for 2022 intake, you can also drop your questions on the Q&A bar and then the questions will be answered at the end of the presentation today. Right, so uh, again, thank you so much for joining this event and then we hope that this event will be a fruitful session for all of you. And we hope that you will be a part of a Beijing Normal University, Hong Kong Baptist University, Interna United International College soon. Right, so I guess I can give uh, the time and place to the teacher from UIC. So the presentation and there are some videos that will be shared as well so you can get to know the university more. Thank you so much, Nadia, for your kind introduction. Um, my name is Katarina Yu. I am the Director of International Development Office at Beijing Normal University, Hong Kong Baptist University, United International College. We just say UIC. And I would also like to introduce my colleague who will co-present. Hello, everyone. I'm Jess Pascal, also from International Development Office. Nice to meet you, you all here. So a very warm welcome. Uh, we are very happy that we have this opportunity to give this uh, live webinar, including QA. And I think before we get into the more difficult details, uh, we prepared a little video to give you a visual impression how beautiful our campus is in Zhuhai. So uh, could I please invite the colleagues from China Admissions to play our video, the first video, that would be very nice.
是智慧、身心、记忆、潜能，全方位的探索；是见贤思齐，打破陈规，展现自我的改变；是勇于造梦，主动挑战，付诸实践的追求。是文理兼修的广博与金砖，是中西合璧的视野和眼光。Uh, hi guys, I think there is like a slight technical issue on the videos. Sharing, so my colleague will restart the video sharing, and hopefully it works uh, well this time. I'm really sorry for the inconvenience. Yeah. Otherwise, I would, uh, since we have many photos of our campus on the slides, not to waste time. Uh, maybe can you just switch back to our PPT? I think our English version of the video is online as well on your portal, right? Yes, it's there. Oh, I, I think I would prefer to, to continue with the PPT, uh, otherwise um, might uh, lose too much time to discuss with our participants here. I see we already have many questions, so that is great. So can you please uh, switch me back to my screen? Uh, Shepard? Hi, teacher, you can just start your sharing directly. So I restart sharing. Oh. Okay, okay, um, yeah, we are also sorry that the video did not work, but at least you saw a couple of pictures of our really beautiful campus and um, it's no lie, it looks like this and we are currently in the best season of the year. Uh, we still have very warm weather, a light breeze. It's neither cold nor warm. So it's really very beautiful right now at UIC. So let's get started. So what is UIC? Uh, UIC was founded in 2005 by two very famous universities. Uh, we are a joint venture university co-founded by Beijing Normal University and Hong Kong Baptist University. Uh, both schools are in the top 300 rankings of QS rankings, for example. UIC was founded as a liberal arts college with the medium of instruction in English. So which means all courses you are taking at UIC will be taught in English in whatever major with a liberal arts curriculum. Um, the purpose was to internationalize Chinese higher education. This is an ongoing trend until now. Uh, to contribute to uh, the global talent pool with our graduates and also uh, to create some alternatives to the traditional Chinese uh, public universities. Um, we have a strong mission statement. So we are de developing uh, the liberal arts that is dedicated to producing well-rounded global talents. So, the whole college is centered around students. So uh, that is until now our strength and our main dedication to teach excellent undergraduate students who will be able to uh, be successful in whatever career they choose directly after the college. Um, we are rooted in academic excellence, language proficiency. That means um, our students are at least bilingual, if not trilingual. You might know here in Guangdong province, uh, the local language is Cantonese. So uh, some students will be uh, fluent in three languages. So are our staff members. So whoever you meet in UAC, those people will be able to converse in English, in Chinese, sometimes plus Cantonese. Um, we have a national anchoring, which means we are also dedicated to the traditional Chinese culture, Chinese language learning. For example, international students can learn Chinese language uh, along with taking courses in English. And uh, we have a very strong international orientation. 
that is reflected in our curriculum. So all of our programs meet international benchmarks in terms of quality. Uh, our students, the majority will pursue a master's degree outside the mainland China um, or work in internationalized fields. Um, so strategically, um, we are positioned in the liberal arts and um, our undergraduate education is excellent. And this is complemented by graduate programs. So step-by-step step, UIC is also developing uh, master's programs. So we have two types, part masters and research masters. Uh, today, however, we will focus on our undergraduate education. So where are we? Um, UAC is located in a very beautiful coastal city, uh, Zhuhai. Zhuhai is basically adjacent to Macau city and directly across Hong Kong. So in non-pandemic times, uh, one of the longest bridges of the world is connecting Zhuhai with Hong Kong and uh, students or staff members can go over for a weekend or use libraries, etc., in Hong Kong and belongs to the bigger part of the so-called Guangdong, Hong Kong, Macau, Greater Bay Area. So the region here is extremely vibrant, developing fast, and is going to be one of the economic hubs of the future in, 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 in China in the future. Um, related to this are many talent policies. So this region, because of the quick development is looking for talents from all over the world who can contribute to the further development in this region. So which means here quite attractive opportunities for people with whatever skill set, including entrepreneurs. Um, UIC shoulders the historical mission of advancing the internationalization of Chinese higher education. And uh, yeah we are taking a lead in implementing liberal arts education in China. What you just saw on the video and what you will see later on some of the slides is our phase one campus. So this is the campus that is standing here. Uh, we have 7,000 students here on campus. You might know as uh, students in China live in dormitories in the university campus area. So it's like a little city where you can find everything, what you need in your daily life. Currently under uh, construction is our second phase campus. This campus will be more dedicated to research, especially in future oriented fields like IT, artificial intelligence, etc., cetera, uh, and will be completed in the near future. So um, UIC is also growing. So within the past 15 years, we grew from 300 students to now over 7,000, and we are continuing to grow. Um, so here is um, on the right side of my slide, you can just see some bullet points, what is happening in the Greater Bay Area. So the Greater Bay Area is really integrating the major cities in the region, in the coastal region of Guangdong province and uh, a set of policies and infrastructure projects are connecting those cities closer and closer. That includes uh, Hong Kong and Macau, uh, that refers to development of talent. So I already mentioned very attractive uh, talent policies to find employment here in the region, um, city development, urban living, etc. So um, basically, uh, if you come to Zhuhai one day, hopefully, uh, you will see uh, the future in the making. So key technologies here is uh, definitely innovation oriented fields, communication, IT technology, artificial intelligence, but also culture and tourism. So Zhuhai is, is not only future oriented, it's also one of the most beautiful and livable cities in China. So we have excellent air quality here. We have the seaside. Uh, many people will come over to Zhuhai to spend a short vacation here and enjoy the beautiful scenery and mountain hills uh, of Guangdong province. Uh, and of course, education plays an important role. And UIC, apart from its international mission, also tries to contribute with our graduates, with our teachers, expertise, collaborations to the further development of uh, the region. 
Just to give you an example, which might be very interesting for, for future students is um, there's just a new policy, for example, that UIC graduates can get employment visa also in Hong Kong. Um, so that's always one of the big uh, questions. Well, I'm doing my undergraduate degree in China, but what then can I find, find a job? So actually the whole region is currently developing policies that makes it more attractive and easier for international staff members to stay, uh, also having a bachelor's degree. Um, along with this, there's also, for example, a development of platforms that will uh, post job offers for people with international skill sets. Um, UIC also is having a career development office that will work with our students starting from year one uh, on the career path they wish to pursue. Here just a quick word on our current president. Our current president is Professor Tang Tao. Uh, Professor Tang is a mathematician and he's also a member of the Chinese Academy of Science. And um, he's the second president of UIC. And ever since he took on duties, uh, UIC is developing in addition to our already excellent undergraduate um, education, we are adding more and more research elements. So alone in the Last two years, UIC really recruited some very famous professors that are internationally recognized for their achievements and contributions in the field of science and technology, uh, which will help to further develop our, our students' talents and also the college as a whole. So how is this reflected on site in our college? So I already mentioned our curriculum is international. All programs meet international standards. Um, they are taught in English. So is our staff. Our staff is like a mix in a nutshell of our Greater Bay Area region. So around one third of our staff members come from the Chinese mainland. Most of them with international education background which means they maybe did a master's or part of their studies abroad all over the world. Uh, one third of our staff members will come from Hong Kong, Macau, or Taiwan. And uh, another third is from overseas countries, um, basically all over the world. Currently we have 13 nations represented, so your home country might be amongst them, uh, which really gives the whole atmosphere on our campus quite an international flavor. Um, for our students, it looks slightly different. The majority of our current undergraduate students come from the Chinese mainland, uh, but also from all corners in China. So you will meet people from the very north up to the very south, and you will notice um, there are quite some cultural differences also within China. We have a smaller proportion of uh, students coming from Hong Kong, Macau, or Taiwan. And uh, the smallest group, um, basically a minority right now, and we hope to change this, um, are our international students. Um, so we really hope that in the years to come, we can invite more and more international students uh, to live and work with us here in UIC. So I mentioned we have a liberal arts curriculum that is traditionally in all liberal arts colleges a four years curriculum and so what, what will you get at the end of it? So after your graduation in year four, you will get the bachelor's degree from Hong Kong Baptist University. That's exactly the same degree diploma like students from Hong Kong Baptist in Hong Kong will receive. So this is internationally highly recognized and um, our students are already sort of a trademark in graduate schools, for example. So. Um, most schools and very good schools, Jessica will say a few words about this later, um, will be happy to recruit our students in master's programs or we already have the first PhDs and starting their own careers as professors. In addition to this, you will get a graduation certificate from UIC uh, that might be helpful if you're looking for further employment, for example, in the mainland. 
our academic structure is four divisions. So we have a division of business and management. That's our biggest division right now. We have a division of science and technology. We have a division of humanities and social sciences, and we have a division of culture and creativity. Um, in those divisions, we have all academic programs located. I will show you later a slide. We currently have 28 undergraduate programs and complemented um, are those programs by course offerings by our general education office. So students can uh, develop their interests, talents, et cetera, within our general education curriculum. Uh, we have a very strong whole person education office uh, that offers courses in experiential learning. So you will also see some slides later. Uh, we of course, to have an English language center that supports second language speakers in developing their English speaking skills, but also skills in academic writing, creative thinking, et cetera, et cetera. And we have a Chinese language and culture center, uh, which will teach us university Chinese to our students and Chinese as a foreign language to our international students. In complementation to this, UAC has several research centers and laboratories. Depending on your major, you will work in them. So here's just a quick overview. Um, I will not list all programs, but maybe just mention some lead programs. So for example, in our division of business and management, our accounting program is a star. Our students are permanently winning prizes in competitions. Um, Entrepreneurship is popular, finance, etc. So you get uh, the traditional range supplemented with modern elements. Um, in our division of science and technology, of course, we have a group of programs circulating around computer science and technology. So we have data science and one of our newest programs is artificial intelligence. But here you can also find, for example, applied psychology or food science, environmental science, statistics or mathematics if you are a science person. In our division of humanities and social sciences, um, a very popular program for international students would be public relations and advertising, uh, media and communication studies. But you also have choices like globalization and development, Chinese culture and global communications, um, English language and literature studies, uh, or if you happen to be already bilingual, uh, applied translation. So for translation studies, you will need to have a, a quite high level of uh, Chinese language skills. And last but not least, we have a division of culture and creativity programs like media arts and design, cinema and television, uh, culture, creativity and management. Uh, our newest and youngest program in this division would be tourism, hospitality and event management. So in general, uh, just a few words, how is the structure? So in total, UIC graduates will have to take 147 to 154 so-called units at UIC as graduation requirement. And uh, you will have, that's like a set menu. So you will have to take major courses. You will have some general education distribution courses and some general education core courses and so-called free electives. Um, so, Free electives and general education distribution is really meant to develop your personal interests or talents. Uh, many students will maybe choose to study a minor in addition to their major. Uh, many students will dedicate free electives for study abroad, um, etc. So basically, you will have a very solid knowledge foundation in one of our majors, plus uh, a good skill set in areas of your choice. Um, our student-centered approach is also um, reflected in how your coursework is assessed. So um, all courses are taught in a student-centered way. Uh, it's outcome-based teaching and learning. So we look at the outcomes, which means normally you will not have this class where you sit the whole semester in a huge lecture hall and then you have to take this big final examination. 
that will decide on your grade. So most courses have a, have a very balanced set of assessments, continuous assessment, formative assessment, and maybe a smaller proportion of a final, depending on the course you're taking. So you will do assignments. Uh, very important in UAC is, is teamwork, team working skills, group presentations, um, sometimes quizzes, sometimes a little midterm. So that depends on your, on, on your major. Uh, at the end, uh, you might have a, a small final exam. Not every course does have a final exam. And based on all of your contributions during the semester, you will get your grade. Um, so that's it with the more formal things. Uh, I would like to invite now Jessica to talk a little bit. Um, how, how do I get into UIC and are there scholarships? Jessica, please. Okay, thank you, Katerina, for uh, detailed and informative information about UIC. And before I start my presentation, I'd like to invite a colleague from China Admission to play a video about international students. Zephyr, can you play the uh, video? Thank you. I think UIC is really cool because there's a lot of opportunities to integrate me and like myself and other exchange students along with the Chinese students to get to know each other and um, explore our differences together but find common ground to integrate together in this. UIC is an educational center that gives students the chance to learn China and all of its cultural aspects including traditional music, traditional dances, history and geological locations, travels and historic places. The environment of UNC is really awesome that I really feel happy here and our technology, all the classrooms and our teachers are highly qualified and I really appreciate to be here and leading my study. When I think of UIC, I just think about when I went back to the club fair and they had so many different organizations there to for us to get interesting and every club we spoke to was so passionate about what they did. Um, whether it was the outdoor club or the fashion model club, everyone, everyone was really, really dedicated to their craft. Okay, thank you, um, Zephyr. I will share my PPT. Okay, and next I will uh, focus on focusing on three uh, items uh, about my presentation. The first one is about scholarship and how to apply to study at UIC. The second one is about education philosophies uh, of UIC. And the la last one will be graduate prospects. Uh, let's start with a scholarship. UIC do offer limited scholarships and we have three scholarships. The first one is full entry scholarship. The second one is a 30% entry scholarship. And the last one is government scholarship. And full entry scholarship uh, is worth 100,000 RMB. And 30% entry scholarship is worth 30,000 RMB. And the government scholarship is worth 10,000 RMB. And full entry scholarship and 30% entry, uh, entry scholarship uh, uh, for high academic achievers and high motivation students. Uh, talking about this, I want to mention about tuition fees of UIC. The tuition fee of UIC is 100,000 RMB in 2022, except the music program. Uh, uh, now we are doing early admission for, uh, for scholarships. Um, we we do early admissions. That means first come, first served. So if you want to study at UIC, so please do not hesitate and apply now. Uh, some students will ask, how do I apply to study at UIC? Uh, I, want, I, want, I will tell you that you can uh, submit all your documents to China Admission. They have a platform. You can submit the uh, following items to China Admission. I will mention here. And also you can find information on China Admission platform. The first one is about high school diploma. That means you need to finish uh, 12 years schooling. The second one is high school transcripts. The third one is 
two letters of recommendation. The first one is personal statement, and the five one is copy of passport. And for this, it is uh, used for applying for GW22, which is used for applying for the visa. And six is about scholarship application form, if there's any. And seven, if you are from uh, non-English speaking countries, we will need language requirements. That means L score minimum is six, and total for IBT minimum score is 79. And the last one is a financial statement. And uh, the last one is application form. So you can prepare all these documents and then submit this to China Admission. And once we receive uh, your uh, application materials, we will submit this to division to prevail. And then uh, within one week, we will get back to you and see whether you will be offered an interview or not. After the interview, we will issue the offer letter if you are accepted by the program within two weeks. So that's the whole procedure about how to apply to study at UIC. And next, I will talk about education philosophies of UIC. Actually, education philosophies of UIC includes three um, parts. The first one is whole person education. The second one is four point education. And the last one is international education. Whole person education aims to implement whole person education ideology by providing experiential learning courses, programs, and activities that foster students developing in teamwork, stamina, and persistence, interpersonal skill, self-awareness, endurance, creativity, sense of responsibility, and cultural awareness. International students will be offered uh, courses in whole person education courses in following seven parts which is adversity management, experiential development, emotion uh, intelligence, sports culture, experiential arts, voluntary service, and environmental awareness. International students will study whole person education courses in year one and year two. And here are some photos about our whole person education activities and classes. And this is about artistic experience. Here shows calligraphy class, poetry class, and Wuqin class. And this one is about sports culture. Um, we have some pictures about house riding, canoeing, and archery, and et cetera. And this one shows the pictures about adversity management classes. OK, here comes to the second education philosophy of USC, four-point education. Four-point education means we focus on students and society, USC faculty members and administrative staff and parents will focus on students and will give full support and better service to the students during their four-year study. Uh, talking about four-point uh, education, I want to uh, mention about society. Society means uh, we normally invite famous people from company, from big company or enterprises to give a career talk. Normally our career development office will invite people from company to do this. And also um, some big companies will offer internships to USC students. And USC means uh, faculty members and also administrative staff. So that's uh, three bodies will support the students. Okay, the last one is international education. Um, in USC, uh, we not only provide opportunities for Chinese students, we also provide opportunities to international students. They can study in our uh, partner institutions for one summer or one semester. Nowadays, we have 62 partner institutions around the world. Okay, last I will talk about graduate prospects. Most of our graduate students, they will study abroad after their four year study. In 2020, uh, we have 68.98% of the graduates study abroad. And uh, over 17% of graduates uh, admit, were admitted to top 100 QS ranked universities. So we really have very good graduate students. Now I'm showing you some of the beautiful pictures of USC. Here you can see our campus scenery.
And this is our learning resource center. We always call this library. This is outside of the learning resource center. This is inside. We have a lot of English books in this learning resource center. And this is our dorm student dormitories. Um, normally, when international students will be roomed with uh, Chinese students, so in their spare time, they can learn Chinese language from uh, Chinese students. And also, they can exchange ideas and concepts with each other in their spare time. And also, we do offer, in our dormitories, we do offer, they will have individual bathroom, they will have uh, individual uh, toilets, and on each floor, they have a uh, laundry, and also they have a self-study room. So it's very convenient. And here is some picture about our sports complex. And this is our Huitong Sports Park. For this sports park, we share this sports park with a local community. So it's really come to realize the concept of a university village. This shows some pictures of uh, our student cafeteria. We have three canteens on campus. And this is uh, cultural creativity and classes. If you have any questions, you can raise this to China Admission or you can reach us where international at usc.edu.cn. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, teacher Jessica and Katharina, for the sharing about UIC programs and education philosophy in every little update students should know for the admissions for 2022 in date. So I think we can cover some questions if you have time. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So there's actually a student who messaged me uh, asking about the English language requirement. So one of uh, one of it would be to have Tobal or IELTS, right? If they're non-native English speakers. But what is uh, the case for students who are studying at the English speaking countries, for example, or maybe their uh, previous education was taught in English. So if this is the case, do they still need to have a English certificate or uh, what's the requirement for them? Um, that is really depending uh, case by case, uh, for example, students from Malaysia. Um, so we, we have country specific requirements uh, that refers to both the high school certificate and the type of uh, schooling, which means uh, ideally um, you would contact us directly because uh, there's not a, a one for all. Uh, however, we will recognize if a student has the complete under uh, pre-university schooling in English language, uh, we will uh, probably waive the IELTS. Yeah. So, uh, and, and for some countries, uh, there's English levels on the high school graduation certificate that will also qualify, or IB diploma, for example, I, IB diploma holders will not need to submit IELTS or TOEFL results. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Right. So another uh, question here would be, oh, is there a cutoff age to apply? Is there an age requirement to apply for yeah. the programs? Yes. Um, upon arrival, you should be over eight years old. That has to do with uh, the Chinese laws. Uh, that's the same in, in almost all Chinese yeah. universities. If you are under 18 upon entry into UIC, you will need to have a legal guardian who is located in mainland China. So UIC unfortunately cannot play the role of, of a guardian for students under age. So uh, please 18 plus upon a commencement of studies. Yeah. Is there like a maximum age limit to apply for the bachelor's program? Um, not really. So we do not have a strict policy and say, okay, people who are, I don't know, 30 years old. So we do not discriminate uh, against mm -hmm. age. However, if you are a mature applicant, you should just be very aware that um, UAC is, is, is a young campus. So uh, for Chinese students, the normal pathway is directly after high school graduation, you go to university. 
which means there will no be no peers. And, and for example, some um, students might be already married or, or have yeah. a family. We do not ac accommodate spouses or children. So undergraduate students will be housed in our dormitories with, uh, with a peer. So uh, that might be difficult to arrange. That looks different for postgraduate degrees, but um, technically we do not have. But uh, that's really a personal consideration, whether you feel up to integrate into a population. Our freshman students, um, the youngest are around 70, 17. Um, we have some very talented students, 17, 18. That's about the age group of our freshmen. So. Got it. Yeah, so I think another question is also mainly about uh, the career opportunities. So I noticed that uh, for students who are graduated from UIC, they actually have the career opportunities open uh, in Hong Kong. So can you maybe tell us more about their career opportunities after graduation? Well, that's also, that really heavily depends on your major. So uh, the, the employment uh, visa opportunity is brand new that came, came out this summer. And uh, well, we all know uh, we are in the middle of a pandemic, which means our international students are currently on online. Um, they are not here except uh, Korean citizens. But for the future, um, it might be possible to, to look for jobs. And our students traditionally do that uh, in their fourth year. So already at the end of the third year, students will start applications depending on whether they want to continue in a master's program or go for employment. Um, and we highly recommend that students starting from year one work with our career development office because um, depending on the internship placements you had before, et cetera, you might uh, be able to, to map out your career path. So um, it's, it's hard to, to tell a recipe. So there's, for example, a group of young entrepreneurs in, in Guangdong province. So just people who, who founded a, a new business together with their Chinese classmates. Um, I think there will be uh, very good employment chances for highly skilled IT people. So Huawei is um, recruiting internationals for, for their uh, program, programming development uh, sections, etc. So uh, that is really also individual, but UIC does have the support so service. So we have one dedicated unit. And then, of course, the program directors and the teaching teams in the individual program will additionally give advice, um, help the students to figure out where is my, my talent, where do I want to go, et cetera. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Katarina. So uh, I think the next question is more towards the location of uh, UIC itself, which is in Zhuhai. I mean, after I, uh, after I arrived in China, after living in China for quite some time, I realized that China is so big. I've never visited Zhuhai myself. And then the, uh, the culture, the food, the situation, whether everything is different from one place to another. So for uh, international students who haven't visited China, or maybe for those who haven't visited Zhuhai, so what's, uh, what is it like living in Zhuhai? So what can they expect living in Zhuhai? Zhuhai is, well, first of all, climate. So Zhuhai does have a subtropical climate, which means we have uh, hot and humid summers. Um, we might have uh, some typhoons in July or August. Uh, all around the year, it is comparatively warm. Uh, that includes the winter, January and February might be a little bit chilly since most houses do not have a heating. Um, Guangdong province has a very unique local culture, Cantonese culture. Many, many people know that from, I don't know, uh, martial arts films, uh, Cantonese dim sum are famous worldwide. So uh, Cantonese cuisine is actually very uh, appreciated all around the globe and that reflects in our lifestyle here. So students will go out for Cantonese morning tea with their friends. And um, Zhuhai is uh, a small size Chinese city that means uh, more than 2 million inhabitants. So it's not one of those super big cities. Um, and compared to maybe Guangzhou or Shenzhen, the pace of life is a bit slower. We, we are a tourist de destination. We are by the sea. 
Uh, UAC itself is not in the city center. We are located a little bit outside the city, which means we have a very calm, very lush green environment. We are in the middle of uh, lychee orchids. So um, it's a relaxed lifestyle, a very good study environment. Um, with the advantage, well, when students are really into the big city life, um, we are connected via those high speed trains. So it takes uh, 30 minutes to Guangzhou. There are ferries to Shenzhen. Um, in non pandemic times, you can cross over to Macau or, or Hong Kong, uh, which means you can get uh, the, the really exciting city life maybe in the weekends while you have a, a um, karma study life during the week. Uh, Cantonese people, like all Chinese people, but uh, Cantonese people in, in, in special, I think that has to do with Hong Kong and, and Guangzhou, the, the history. Um, those people are, are used to have contact with people from other cultures. They, they have been trading for hundreds of years. So people are open-minded, friendly, um, very willing to help uh, international people. Well, I'm, I'm one of those international people. I, I speak from experience. So um, internationals are, are welcome here and uh, you can make friends and, and enjoy the, the lifestyle, the uniqueness and um, while remaining a little bit international. That's what I would say. Maybe Jessica says something from the Chinese perspective. <laughs> okay, just a supplementary to uh, Katharina's talk. I just want to mention that Zhuhai is the most livable city in China in two continuous years. And Zhuhai has more and more parks now. And uh, our international students like to go picnic on weekends, go to parks to have picnic and also go hiking when they have time. So it's a really nice place to stay in. And also Zhuhai is very close to Macau, Hong Kong, big cities like Guangzhou and Shenzhen. Yeah, just as Katharina mentioned. So yeah, that's all. Thank you, Katharina and Jessica. So I think it's going to be a very good option, right? Especially for maybe for those who are also coming from a hot climate countries like me, for example, I came from Indonesia. It's hot, uh, it's hot and humid every uh, every single day. So I think that could be like a good option to go to Chuhai. And mm -hmm. if for those who are tired with the hustle bustle city life, Chuhai is definitely a good place to live. Right, so let me check if there's another question. I think there is a one more question on the chat. So, uh, so the student is asking whether a UIC is accepting transfer students. So uh, he studied before in another institute, but he's looking into completing his bachelor uh, program, his bachelor's degree. So he's wondering if that is, uh, that is possible to do in UIC. Yes. Um... Yes, it is. So we, we do accept transfer students' applications. However, um, according to our rules, at least 50% of our degree needs to be studied in UIC. And then depending on, on the prior institution and the prior major, what will happen. So, um, so we would like to invite uh, this candidate to contact us directly. Mm -hmm. We will submit the academic transcripts to our registry and we will try to map courses and see uh, how much credit can be transferred. But we do transfer credit and then depending on how much credit has been transferred, we will place into year two, uh, et cetera. But in, in general, uh, this is possible. Mm -hmm. Maybe more difficult right now. Um, so we, we want to be upfront about this. Um, I mentioned this, except South Korea, currently the borders are still closed. Um, our international students are online. Uh, we had feedback, they have good experiences. So we, they have a group of, of friends also in UIC, et cetera. But uh, for example, for transfer students, it might happen that you have to catch up a couple of courses that might be more difficult uh, as long as the borders are, are not open, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe you can also share the uh, contact address, the contact email, the email address. So for the particular student, she, he can contact you guys directly. But thanks, right. Katarina. Yeah. yeah. So, also for, for all of you guys out there, um, you can contact us. And we are also happy to meet you individually. Uh, we are aware all of you might have completely different questions or what does a, a specific major look like. We plan to have more seminars with some highlights on the different divisions. But if, if you're really serious about your plan to come here, we will also try to connect you with one of our professors and you can talk to, to one of our specialists. How, how does the study in 
So I, I'm from a humanities background. I, I would not be the right person to, to explain the strength of our computer science program, for example. <laughs> okay, and uh, we will arrange one, one consultation uh, appointment with the international students. So you can um, give information to China Admission and then they will make an appointment with us to one to one consultation. So you can also uh, email us at uh, weareinternational at usc.edu.cn. So that's our um, contact information. All right, so, well, we still have a few more questions. Apparently students are very excited uh, today with the uh, session from UIC. So there is another question uh, for a student and she is uh, currently living in China and she's interested to apply to UIC. So she is wondering if the classes will be held on campus because she is because uh, she's in China right now. Yeah, welcome, come, yeah. come, come. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of the fortunate ones to enjoy the beautiful campus. I'm not saying that online is, is also a good option and might be safe for many of you, but if you are already within mainland China, of course, it is much easier to process and depending, if, even if you're close in the, the region, it's, it's easier to connect with us, give us a call. Um, yeah, so yeah. Yeah, that if, is great. <laughs> yes, if, if students can visit our campus, um, if the pandemic allows, we can take the uh, students to do a campus tour, it's no problem. I'll talk to the professors in each division, it uh, can be arranged. Yeah. That's great. So talking about that, so for students who are not located in China, they're still doing online classes right now. Yes. So how's, uh, how's your IC arrangement at the moment? Because uh, for international students, they can come from different part of the world, right? So it's going to be different time zones and everything. Right. So uh, students will have to adjust to China time. The thing is, our uh, international student population is not, uh, not big. That's what I mentioned, uh, which means uh, in, in a classroom might be one international student. So we have no, um, no chance to arrange extra mm -hmm. time slot for bigger groups of international students. So if you are considering the online option, um, yeah, that might mean in some parts of the world that some of your classes will be in the middle of the night or at inconvenient times. Uh, we use a Tencent here, so all classrooms are equipped with a microphone and camera, so it's mm -hmm. basically like a hybrid classroom. Okay. Teachers are supportive, um, every teacher does have um, teaching assistants or an assistant instructors who will work with the students, and depending on the instructor, uh, they will also be willing to um, that really depends on the professor, but most professors, for example, I will do this, I will record all sessions and post this. We have an online learning platform called iSpace, where all uh, materials will be posted for review to all students. But for example, sometimes internet connection breaks down, etc. then it's easier for students who are not on site to uh, catch up. Right, so I think there is like a final question here. Mm -hmm. So the student is interested to apply for the art program. Mm -hmm. So the question is, will they need to submit the portfolio along during the application process? As far as I know, no. For example, for media arts and, and design might not be in the first step, uh, but of course the student should be prepared in the interview phase uh, that the teachers will will want to, to see um, maybe some some individual work. So I, I think to convince a, a panel in, in the media arts and area, of course, but uh, we currently, as far as I'm aware, uh, we will double check and also let China admissions know no formal portfolio where you have to invest half a year of work is, is uh, necessary. We have special admission requirements for the music performance program. So um, obviously the students need to have a certain proficiency level in, in, in instruments, etc. So for that program, it's a, it's a bit demanding. <laughs> Right, so I think we cover all the questions today. Uh, before we close the session, and thank you uh, to teacher Jessica and Katarina for sharing the information for UIC 2022 admissions update. So before we close today's session, is there any final thoughts or final uh, statement that you would like to say to our participants today? Yes, um, become a UIC -er. 
although uh, you might need to start the first phase online. Um, I, I think UIC is a great place. We are waiting here in Zhuhai for you guys. Um, start the journey together with us. Um, and yeah, never hesitate to come contact us. It's not the only IDO office. Uh, that's really the spirit of UIC. We are close to the students. Contact us, have a chat with us. There's no strings attached. So uh, we are here for the students and um, hope to see you soon. Yeah. Come Thank and you. join us. <laughs> <laughs> Hope to, see, hope to see you soon too. Thank you so much uh, for the wonderful info session today. And I hope it is useful for everybody who joined this info session. And we'll see you on another event. So guys, if you have any more questions, feel free to contact uh, UIC directly, or you can also contact Jana Admissions for more information. Thank you, Lydia. Thank, thank you. you thank you so much. Bye. Have a nice bye day, bye. everyone. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye.